Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would do something a little bit different and that's trying out historical beauty recipes. And yes, this could get very interesting. I have looked through 2000 pages worth of recipes online and in books from the 19th century and the early 20th century. And for the most part, a lot of these recipes are very dangerous. But I found one that is not, so I'm going to try that out here today, a face powder recipe. The entire recipe is detailed in this book by Harriet Hubbard Iyer, and this was published in 1902, I believe so, just edging into the Edwardian era. And it contains only two ingredients, which is zinc oxide and cornstarch. Now cornstarch, I believe, is used traditionally to soak up any excess oils onto your skin and the zinc oxide would be used to whiten your skin tone. This would be paired with a liquid whitener, as you can see here in this recipe. This would have a really thin consistency, more similar to toners than an actual foundation, and after you would apply this, you would wipe it off. The white powder instead here, which you would apply on top of this liquid whitener, would act as a foundation because it has a much stronger opacity. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to refer to this white powder as a foundation powder. So you would take this white powder foundation, just coat your face with it, and then take some rouge and maybe some eyeliner and apply that over top. You would look pretty pale, but that was the point. So I'm going to try making this foundation recipe here today and also trying it with two different makeup looks. One is a historically accurate makeup look from this time, 1902 that is, and also a sheer noir look, which as you know, I'm very passionate about here on this channel. It's Japanese for white face, by the way, so I'm gonna try to do this with a very heavy white makeup look. So I have the actual recipe right here, and here's what you need to do. First, you take the finest cornstarch and the pure oxide of zinc, and you mix this thoroughly and sift through very fine bolting silk. Then you reject all that remains in the bolting silk and then sift a second time. Perfume this with three drops of oil of roses. Now I'm gonna skip this last part because my skin is very sensitive to fragrances and especially that, so I'm just going to use the cornstarch and the zinc oxide. Now you need approximately um, one ounce of the finest cornstarch, which, um, Got the finest, cheapest from Walmart, and also three ounces of zinc oxide, which I bought this online. Welcome to my floor, everyone. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna activate this food scale. Then I'm going to add three ounces of zinc oxide. Then adding one ounce of cornstarch. Then you want to mix it together, and this is quite clumpy. So I'm gonna to try to get rid of all these clumps. Now I'm going to remove this. They say to use bolting silk to sift the powder, but I don't have that, so what I'm gonna use instead is this leftover piece of tulle from my collection and this embroidery hoop. So I'm just going to lay it on here as so and pour a little bit on top. And as you can really see, there are a lot of these big clumps being separated from the rest of the powder. Just gonna give that a little bit of a shake. And as you can see, this separates the larger particles from the smoother and finer ones. Just taking a little bit and just pressing my fingers through it to press it through the tool. Now that's finished and as you can see, the powder is really fine now, very smooth. So what I'm gonna do next is pour this into a different container. During this time, they would have used probably a tin, a tin container that is, and that would make it easy for them to just reach in there with their powder um, puff and just powder the face with it. However, since there are no preservatives in this formula, I'm a little bit hesitant to do that because I'm just a little bit worried that, and I'm being kind of paranoid here, but 
I'm just a little bit worried that microbes might grow within it. So I'm going to opt for a different container. And the one I'm going to opt for is this cardboard container right here. I bought this off Etsy and it's made out of craft paper and it also comes with a sifter so you can just, whenever you want to use a little bit of powder, just pour it out and that will make it cleaner. Now I don't have a funnel so I'm going to make my own. Just hold there and pour the powder into it. I'm placing the inner cap on top. Then the actual container top. Now I still have a ton of powder left, so I'm going to pour into other um, craft paper containers and hopefully I have enough. So I was able to fill in four of these little containers and here's how it works. Tap a little bit onto your hand and here's how it looks all blended out. So this would have been the way that they would have worn it back in 1902. Hello everyone, welcome back. This will be day one of testing and I have to say, this is like the worst time to have a breakout going on, but I have all these like acne, post acne marks going on right around here. And I also feel like crap, so <laughs> this will be quite the test. I'm gonna do this first in the way that she attended in her book. And basically you would take a powder puff, I believe, and just apply the foundation, the powder that is as foundation onto your skin. My skin is pretty dry right now, so this could get, I don't know. I'm not going to enjoy this, but I'm gonna try it out anyways. Here is the powder in its glory. And I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of this, apply it onto this paper, and then add the powder puff on top and pat that onto my skin. Okay, let's do this. Okay, it's like really hard to spread this across my face. Like it just stays in one area and sort of like clings to my skin where it's like really dry. So that's not good. Like, can you see it right here what's going on? Like if I want to apply the powder onto your face, it like clumps to that one spot and it's like really hard to blend it out. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do instead is take a brush and see if it can blend out this um, powder better, hopefully. And it does apply a lot more smoother and it doesn't really clump onto my face when I use this method instead. But they didn't really have brushes like this for the face back then, so this is not historically accurate. So here it is, all applied to my skin, and it's a very interesting look. <laughs> it's like, I don't have any words for this. Like, I look super washed out and pale and not in a good way, but the brush does apply it a lot better than, you know, using the actual powder puff. It seems to really cling on to my dry skin if I use a powder puff as opposed to the brush. So. I would definitely recommend the brush if you're trying to apply this onto your own skin. Not sure why you would apply this, but in case you want to, that is what you should use instead. Now to make this a little bit more historically accurate, I'm going to apply some additional makeup that they would have worn during this time. So that includes very light natural blush, a tiny bit of eyeliner to the upper eyelids using a uh, basically the only eyeliner I have and also some red lipstick and during this time this was worn to really offset the whiteness of the skin. This is definitely a foundation powder that would complement light skin tones the best. If you have medium or dark skin tones this would look pretty awful on you. It looks pretty awful on me but it will look even more awful on you but yeah i'm gonna wear this for i think six or seven hours and return back here to show you how it looks after being worn for that long 
Now, this was about at the seven hour mark for me. That was around 8 p.m. And so you can see here that it doesn't look very good on my skin. I noticed after the two or three hour mark, my oils start to get, start to peek through my skin and mix with the foundation powder. And so this really made it adhere less to my skin. So if I would touch my face, you know, just like this, the foundation powder would sort of pick up and that wouldn't look very good because it did make my skin much lighter and you could see my actual skin tone underneath that. Wow, that is bright by the way, yikes. Okay, so I do have to say I didn't like wearing this foundation powder whatsoever. It didn't feel good on my skin, it felt very drying and it didn't last very long and for me it just seems really impractical. So. I don't like it for that purpose, but perhaps for Shidonori, it may work out a little bit better since I feel like this would be a great powder to really amplify the whiteness of a white foundation. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to test this out with Shidonori to see how it performs. And hopefully it works out okay, because that's why I made this actually for, for my Shidonori looks. So obviously the first thing I need to do is apply a white foundation and this is from a brand I no longer support. Now I'm going to test this powder to see how it performs and hopefully it's good. So I have some here on this powder puff and I'm going to apply this right around here. There's something I've noticed right away about this, and that is the powder doesn't seem like it's as fine milled compared to my Ben Nye setting powder. And so perhaps that's why I wasn't able to get a more smooth finish in my previous day's video, where it just seemed to really clump onto my face in certain spots. Maybe that's why. In case you couldn't tell, this powder isn't applying very smoothly. You can see right here how it clumped underneath my eye. It looks pretty horrible. And you can see in some areas of my face, the powder just didn't adhere as well, causing the makeup itself to look very patchy. Next, I want to see how it works with eyeshadow. Now I noticed right away that the eyeshadow didn't apply very smoothly. And then I started lifting up the actual foundation from my eye. This did allow the eyeshadow to adhere better to my skin, but obviously that only happened because there's no foundation there. I also struggled a lot with blending, as you can see here. I feel like the DSLR flatters my skin a little bit more than with my iPhone, so here it is in all its glory. It's pretty terrifying. Yeah, it's just horrible. So applying some more eyeshadow and in case you couldn't tell, there's like a really weird shadow right here, or like where the foundation is lifting up. You can see where the shadow abruptly ends. Okay, I've tried so hard to make this work, but it's just not happening. I'm having so many issues with blending. Only reason why this eyeshadow is adhering to the rest of my skin is because the actual foundation is lifting off right here. And that is the last thing I want happening because I cannot blend this eyeshadow out in a very smooth way and it's just so hard to work with and it's just not a workable solution for me. Unfortunately, I think I need to scrap this and this is a very good lesson for me that um, just because they're like old recipes does not mean it works. Anyways, here's the question. What the fuck happened here? I know for certain that using only two ingredients for a face powder probably isn't enough. It doesn't really appear to bind well to the skin, which I think is a major issue with this. Um, with my Ben Nye powder, with my Laura Mercier transparent powder, they bind to the skin very, very easily and spread, you know, very easily onto the skin. And with this, I had a lot of issues with that. It would apply very clumpily, if that's a word, I don't think it is, but it would apply in clumps onto my face. And when I would try to buff it out or blend it out, it didn't really do that. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say a lot of these recipes from 
1902, 1901, the 19th century, the 18th century, most of them aren't very good. And there's a good reason why we don't use these recipes anymore. However, I remain convinced, and perhaps this is because I'm delusional, but I remain convinced that there is a good face powder recipe out there for me. If I just dig in a little bit deeper. I've gone through 2,000 or at least 2,000 pages worth of recipes thus far, and I only found one face powder recipe I could use that was safe. So I guess I have way more research to do on this, but I have to say that this recipe for either a natural look or for a heavy foundation look just won't work out and I don't see how I could make it work out for my face because it was just so hard to work with and I've worked with really tough powders and really iffy foundations before but this was pretty horrible. Anyways that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this informative video which was pretty much a disaster, but I hope it was pretty informative for you. Um, let me know what your thoughts are about this and perhaps what else I could do to make this work for me because I have really no clue right now. And yeah, I'll see you later. Bye.